Hello and welcome to the February 2021 edition of the Pembrokeshire Bird Diary. I'm Annie Haycock from the Pembrokeshire Bird Group, here to share some of the highlights of the month. February is often a slow month. On pleasant sunny days, a greater number and variety of resident species are singing and looking for mates. Winter visitors are thinking of moving north and summer migrants are starting their journeys from way down south. Our various walks along country lanes gave us views of buzzards and red kites displaying. A pair of ravens were busy taking nesting material to martle twy wood, while a male and female goshawk seen on separate occasions were probably the local pair. These female blackbirds engaged in a spat on the verge a few metres ahead of us, and a marsh tit gave us the once-over from the top of a hedge. This pair of nuthatches were checking out potential nest site. They'll have to do a lot of work to get this entrance small enough for safety. Out on the estuary, the huge flocks of golden plovers and lapwings began to disappear, and the golden plovers in particular weren't seen during the second half of the month. Teal, however, was still around in good numbers. Counts back in December indicate this has been a good winter for them, but with the wetland bird survey suspended due to the COVID restrictions, we don't know if they actually reached a record high this season. Elsewhere in the county, the eight hooper swans were still hanging around at Groysgoch, and the cattle egret flock at Hundleton grew to an amazing 17 individuals on the 3rd, but only one the following day. They seem to disappear into places where no one can see them and reappear in varying numbers as up to seven were seen later in the month. Dippers were often seen along the river through Haverford West, particularly by the weir. We encountered a couple of males singing lustily and very loudly as they need to be heard above the running water. Andy Sims photographed these two checking out a potential nest site. Richard Ellis has been keeping an eye on a first winter male marsh harrier that carries orange wing tags from Norfolk. It was seen several times at Castle Martin Course in November and December before making a trip to Marlowe's at the end of the year. It was back on Castle Martin Course the following day before returning to Marlowe's Mere where Elwyn Davis took these dramatic photos. As far as we know he was based in and around Marlowe's and Dale for the rest of January and February. Even under lockdown there were plenty of eyes on him there. Debbie Head in Marlowe's has been sending in sightings, and at one point he flew past Dave Astin's bedroom window at the GAN, thus securing a place on Dave's garden list. Then, on 26th of February, an orange wing tagged Marsh Harrier, probably him but too far away to be certain, was seen at Castle Martin Course. This is not the first Norfolk tagged bird to be seen in Pembrokeshire. Back in April 2013, a second winter bird with green wing tags was seen at the GAN. Several Norfolk birds have visited Wales, while others have been dispersed in all directions, including to the continent and even to the Senegal in West Africa. Woodcock are probably one of the most common waders in the county during the winter, according to work done by Paddy Jenks with the Pembrokeshire and Tyvee ringing groups. However, they are rarely seen, let alone counted, because of their secretive and nocturnal habits. David Ord, however, has had several sightings in his garden this winter and has even captured this one on a trail camera. Paddy and his team ringed a total of 1,653 woodcock between November 2008 and March 2019. 107 of these individuals were recaptured or recovered. The recaptures show that many individuals have a very high sight fidelity. This means the ringers often found the birds within a hundred metres of where they had been caught either the same winter or in previous winters. The recoveries outside of the UK show that many individuals wintering Pembrokeshire originate in Russia. In Europe it's illegal to shoot during the breeding season, so most of the recoveries from closer to home are probably birds on autumn migration, though some could have bred in these areas. The ringing groups hope to continue with the project into the future with the aim of collecting as large a sample size as possible. Toby Phelps reported that February was an exciting month at Amroth. Exceptionally rough seas, especially during the middle of the month, deposited large numbers of marine invertebrates along the coast here. This attracted a mass of gulls to the area, taking advantage of the abundant food resource. 
He estimated that the numbers of herring gulls peaked at around 8,000 in the middle of the month and that it was a real spectacle to witness. Other gulls present during the month included two first winter Iceland gulls on the 4th, one of which stayed around for the remainder of the month, being last seen on the 25th. A first winter yellow-legged gull on the 13th, a peak count of eight Mediterranean gulls on the 16th, and a first winter little gull at Amroth on the 19th. Other notable sightings in the area included a female long-tailed duck offshore between Amroth and Risman's Bridge on the 21st. Toby recorded five colour-ringed birds during the month, a herring gull from Flatholm Island, two black-headed gulls, one from the West Midlands and the other from Poland, a common gull from Norway, and most exciting, an oyster catcher ringed in Iceland which regularly spends its winters in Galicia in Spain. This was its first sighting in Wales. Elsewhere other colour ringed gulls have been seen. This one is a well travelled Mediterranean gull that turned up on the Nevin estuary. Spring starts according to the Met Office on March the 1st, or more traditionally it starts on March the 21st. But if you count the first arrivals of long distance migrants, then any date is possible. Jonathan Bennett reported three sand martins over Trevithan on the 25th of February. So has spring officially arrived? Richard and Giselle managed to get back out to Skokholm on February the 26th. Greg was back on Ramsey on the 28th with new warden Nia and had the first island migrants in the form of a wheat ear and black cap that day. Meanwhile, new SCOMA wardens Leighton and Kerris were still preparing to make their crossing on March the 1st. We'll finish with another bit of trail camera footage, this time from a garden near Saundersfoot. The owner wondered why the goldfish were disappearing and soon found the answer. Well that's a quick look at February. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll look out for next month's edition.